Lane, I like that you started with this. I'm just going to add a couple of points so that we can build off this together. So um, mm -hmm. let's even give people the definition of a calorie. And I think we should remind people that when you and I and most people are talking about calories, we're really talking about kilocalories. Um, and some people will get those confused. So a big yep. C calorie is equal to a thousand little C calories or a K calorie. But regardless of that nomenclature, I think most people, when they're saying I eat 2000 calories are of course referring to kilocalories. Each of these, one of those, if I'm not mistaken, and you're going to be probably remembering this better than me, Lane, one calorie, I believe is the energy required to heat one gram of water from 14.5 to 15.5 degrees Celsius at, at one atmosphere. Correct. That sound about right. Bingo. Yeah. Yeah. About, about right. I, I, I actually have specifically forgotten the exact definition, but it's basically the amount to, um, increase the degree of water by one degree Celsius. Yeah. So, so again, to your point, it's simply a unit of energy, just as we would think of a joule as a unit of energy. And <clears throat> I also want to highlight something you said, which I, um, I think is a very important thing for people to understand, which is when we talk about the conservation of energy, that also implies when you change forms of energy. So when you eat food, the energy, as you said, is stored within the bonds. It is chemical energy. We turn that into electrical energy via the electron transport chain, and then we turn it right back into chemical energy, both in the immediate sense of ATP, where you again, now create the energy in the phosphate bond. But more importantly, as you said, when you're storing it, you're putting it right back into a hydrocarbon. And it's those carbon, 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 hydrogen bonds that if my memory serves me correctly, are the most energy dense bonds within our body, much more than say a carbon oxygen bond would be. Correct. And, and that's why, you know, we see fatty acids have much more calories or much more energy per gram compared to carbohydrate because carbohydrate has more oxygens. Um, whereas fats through beta oxidation, where you're having lopping off two carbons with hydrogens, you can pretty much, I mean, it's not direct, but you can pretty much create acetyl CoA right from that, which go, which then goes in directly into the Krebs cycle. Whereas glucose, there's a lot more, um, more involved in getting the, uh, ATP or generating ATP from that. Um, now glucose does have benefits in terms of amount of oxygen required to generate the same ATP. It just depends on the metric you're looking at. Right. And, and then of course the, the final point you make there, Lane, I think is worth restating because it is so important, which is, and this will come up later. I think when we talk about genetic differences in tolerance to amounts of macronutrients and things like that, but you can really liberate different amounts of energy from the same foods, depending on many things, but presumably based on your gut microbiome. That's probably one of the things that's going to create a pretty sizable delta when it, when it comes to how much food you're capturing. In other words, how much of that chemical energy you're able to recoup and repurpose into electrical energy. Yeah. I mean, there, there is evidence, for example, that obesity prone people, um, that they have a flora of gut microbiome or sorry, a gut microflora that is better able to extract energy from the foods they eat. Now that could be reverse causation as well. It could be that obese people eat a diet that causes this kind of gut microflora to bloom, you know, so on and so forth. So we got to be careful about establishing, you know, yeah. correlation versus causation. Um, and I will say that when they look at, cause they can actually assess how much energy is lost in, in fecal matter. Um, it's, it's usually around five to 10%, depending on people. And, and most of your 95% of your Gaussian distribution falls in there, right? So it, it is a significant difference, but what I would tell people is be cautious about saying, well, th this is why we see huge differences between individuals. It may be for certain individuals, but I think for the vast majority of people, unless you're literally an outlier, uh, it's probably gonna be somewhere relatively close, right? Uh, so I think establishing that, okay, we've all, we already, we, we understand that there is some variability in how much energy you can extract from the food you eat. And I'm going to come back to that as well, because there's another aspect, uh, the tracking portion that we need to talk about as well, that confuses people. Mm -hmm.